Quick looks. All right, all right. Well, welcome back, everyone. We're going to jump right on in here. So, Carlos mentioned in his presentation right before the break about the, all the comments about the role of product marketing and PMM. So, I just want to have a quick show of hands. Who in this audience has heard at least some mention of the role of the product manager at Airbnb and the demise of the role of product manager? A quick show of hands if you've heard that at all. All right. For those of you who haven't heard it, I do recommend there was a popular podcast, Lenny's podcast that came out this past weekend. It's worth a listen to. If you actually listen to the dialogue, I think it's more about the coming together of product management and product marketing and less about the demise of the product manager, but the demise of product management gets much, many more clicks in social media. Um, and this whole kind of commentary originated back at the Figma conference a few months ago. And that was actually the origin of this panel. Because that dialogue has started all sorts of chatter and banter about like, where are the lines? How does product marketing and product management partner effectively together? So what we did was we brought together a cross-functional panel here. I mean, most of you are product managers out there. You got a few marketers on the stage here. So we're gonna share our perspectives about the role of product management and product marketing, and sometimes how those roles collide. But before we jump into the meet, we wanna do a quick round of introductions. So if each of you could just quickly introduce yourself and share a bit about how um, these product managers in the audience can use your products. We'll start with you, Ritu. I'll get started. Welcome everyone, I hope you're having fun so far. My name is Ritu Kapoor and I'm the CMO of Product Board. Um, I live in the Bay Area with my two kids, 11 and 16. The 11 year old still loves me. Um, uh, before I got to Product Board, I was CMO at a company called Lob, which is in the direct mail automation space. And before that, I was VP of Product Marketing at Automation Anywhere, which is in the RPA space. Um, actually, before that, engineering and product roles, but I'm going to be dating myself here if I tell you how many. And when I first uh, was introduced to Product Board about a year ago, I remember thinking I would spend countless hours banging head against wall as both a as both a product marketer and a product manager, um, just trying to figure out what customers want to see from the product. And if I, I would have really saved those hours. So at this point, I believe we have 6,000 customers across both commercial and enterprise, both mid-market and enterprise. And the three things that really, uh, that I will um, uh, take out from what they tell us and on the value that product work provides them is really a, it's a system of work for the product manager, purpose built for their needs. It's not for the project manager, it's not for the engineer, it's really a way for them to do their daily jobs in the right way without friction whether that's writing feature specs, whether that's prioritizing features, creating roadmaps, aligning with their teams, things that they need to do on a daily basis, just make it simpler. The second thing I hear from them is being a central source or finding Product Board to be their central repository for all customer feedback, all stakeholder feedback, and being able to take all of those different pieces of feedback, would be hundreds and thousands, and getting the insights and using those insights to be able to do their jobs well. And I'm glad that both of you use it as well. I'd love to be able to talk to you a little bit later about Product Board. And the third thing I hear, and for me this is the most important, is alignment with your go-to-market colleagues. Often it's a silo. Product works in one uh, part of the room, um, go-to-market works in the other side of the house. So how do you basically make sure that the entire company is aligned on one product vision? People know what you're building. People know how you're building. Your salespeople are able to present the most up-to-date roadmaps to, your, uh, to their customers without having to pull product managers in the room. And just even looking at revenue targets for each feature, all of that together, I think for us, Product Board really becomes that system of work, that central repository, that go-to-market alignment um, that product money managers are looking for. So anyways, I'm a big fan. <clears throat> Thanks, Ritu. So um, my name is Karan Mavai. I'm Senior Director of Product at User Testing. Uh, I've been in product management or in product roles for about over 20 years now. I uh, spent a number of years at SAP, at Business Objects, and a variety of companies, both here in the Valley. I'm based in Vancouver, Canada. 
So for our fellow Canadians, uh, welcome to beautiful San Francisco. Um, at User Testing, we, we lead a movement to, to bring human insight and empathy into your product experiences. And uh, one of the things that I'm excited about is uh, we enable product teams and everything from user research, designers, product managers, and our colleagues in product marketing to really get at the why uh, behind what's happening with your product. So we're inundated with a lot of data in our day-to-day -day lives. We have a lot of great tools that, that bring us a lot of behavioral data, and we really help to dig in further underneath that and, and really get at the why of what's happening interactions with the users, discussions with the users uh, of your products and your experiences. Um, really excited. I'm the token product manager on this uh, panel of marketers, but obviously uh, filled with a, a room of uh, colleagues here. So uh, thank you for, for bringing us on. Great. Hey, folks. This is Arshul. I'm a principal product marketing manager at Amplitude. And um, I have an engineering management background. I've worked in both startups and enterprise companies um, across a range of roles from product management, solutions consulting, and now product marketing. Uh, Amplitude is a digital analytics platform that you as a product manager can use in order to build better products. And so you can use Amplitude to look at user behavior and journeys, um, understand metrics like conversion, retention, monetization of your users in your products, and then take that to uh, derive insights and decide what actions you can take on your users. And uh, those actions could be deploying A-B tests and experiments. Um, they could also be deploying marketing campaigns. And Amplitude will be there along the way to power and enable all of those. So excited to be here on this panel and uh, looking forward to uh, the discussion. Thank you so much for those introductions. So let's uh, jump into the first question. So product marketers and product managers, they work very closely together. Some companies, product marketing reports into product management, sometimes it reports into the CMO, the marketing organization. But putting that aside, there sometimes is some overlap. I'd love for you each to kind of share, like, give me one specific example of a situation where there's been some overlap between the product management function and the product marketing function, and what was the negative consequence of that overlap? And Let's start with the product manager on the stage. Let him go first. Um, yeah, so uh, this has definitely been an experience that I've, uh, you know, from company to company you, you, you go to. And one of the things I recommend to every product manager, you, you join a new company, there's always an established product practice, whether it's product marketing, product management. And within that, there's uh, the, the roles that have been doing the functions in and around product management or product marketing for a fair bit of time. And you come into it, you don't know exactly who's doing what. And where the friction or the, the, the issues tend to happen is, uh, you know, you, you haven't really established those, uh, those norms or, or understood the practices that are there within the company. So uh, a lot of times uh, pricing and packaging comes on. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's very common. And, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, others can probably touch on that. Anytime you bring up pricing, uh, you lose up about an hour in every meeting uh, uh, discussing that. But um, an issue that I had at a previous company, win-loss analysis between sales, marketing, product management, we always were discussing like who should actually be running this? Why is it important? Uh, obviously, there's a lot of insight and understanding why you want a particular deal or why a customer may have uh, chosen a different solution. And, and so there was this constant discussion and friction around who should be leading that, uh, why it's important for us to, to having that. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's just uh, you want that function to, to be happening. You need the, the outputs of that to really help drive your decision making. So uh, I don't get too hung up on the ownership rather than making sure that we are doing the different things that we need to across the teams and that we are getting the, the output and the data that we want. But before we move on, yep. what happens when it's not clear? Like what, what are some of the negative issues when you don't know who's owning the competitive intelligence? You don't know who's winning you know, ultimately, it either falls on the floor because you're yeah. you're you're not dealing with that friction within the company, and so people sometimes naturally don't want to have uh, friction with their colleagues, whether that's yeah. in a new environment or an existing one. And so you're either not doing it well, or it's being done across the board, and so you end up having an issue where you're running the same program in multiple areas. So that's that's not really efficient. And are you yeah. really sharing the data or doing that effectively? You look pretty stupid in your in front of your customers if you're. Uh, yeah. Uh, sort of being repetitive. But I think uh, 
the one that I tend to see a lot is you just you're not dealing with it head on and, and really addressing the underlying problem, which is you need to effectively collaborate in, for, in order for this to, to, to work well. That's great. How about you, Darshal? Yeah, pricing and packaging for sure. <laughs> so um, a while ago, I was at a startup where we were going from a one product to a multi-product company. Um, and the product manager for the new uh, product we were launching um, had strong opinions on how we would go to market, um, specifically selling it and packaging it as an individual SKU or its own product. And as we spoke with our executive buyers um, at all of our customer accounts, we started to learn that um, they don't actually see those products selling individually or, or buying them individually. Um, they see value uh, when they buy the first, the core product, and then use the additional one with it. Um, and so, as you can imagine, as a result of that, we had to have a number of alignment and stakeholder conversations uh, to try and uh, think about a new pricing and packaging strategy where we sell it as a platform as opposed to individual SKUs. Um, and then to answer your question, the result of that is delays um, and mm. really just um, time that could have been spent uh, building additional capabilities or launching something new um, is spent debating um, these factors inside. Um, and I, I want to uh, agree with what Karan said that, you know, there's an element of deduplication of effort. So when you are duplicating efforts, um, so if, as a product marketer, I'm telling the product manager, here's what should be or what should not be on your roadmap. Uh, that's counterproductive to them. And uh, conversely, uh, what's counterproductive to uh, product marketing is if there's, um, you know, uh, roadblocks to rolling out faster when it comes to pricing and packaging. Um, and so where overlap exists, it's really um, duplication of efforts can be counterproductive and leading to time delays. But uh, where overlap includes alignment and going to market, I think that can be a stronger uh, facet for the company as opposed to not having that at all. All right. Ritu, how about yourself? Yeah, I mean, pricing and packaging for sure. And the other thing I'll bring up is competitive strategies. So I think the audience, show of hands, if you've ever filled out those massive Excel sheets for the Gartner um, magic quadrants and the waves with your product management uh, colleagues or product marketing colleagues, it takes weeks because, and it really showcases the differences in how both teams look at competitive strategies, stops down, bottoms up. And just trying to get alignment is the first three weeks of that Gartner survey. Um, and the negative consequences of, you know, having this misalignment or having this overlap in job duties is not acting on the insights you have. Product marketing goes and brings their own, product marketing management is looking at their own versions of these insights and you're sitting on them instead of acting on them. And what suffers is the market, the go-to-market teams, the, the users that are waiting for you to act on the feedback and act on the insights that, that you've gotten. So the market suffers in the end. Yeah. And just to build on what the panel has said, from my own experience, one of the negative consequences is morale, right? And there's a challenge when there's a duplication of efforts, when you're building up towards something, you think you're about ready to launch, then all of a sudden there's a disagreement for the people actually doing the work, the you know, more hands-on folks, that has a significant implication both to the product marketers as well as the product managers because that lack of connection at the top can really impact their day jobs. Um, which leads us to, so that, those are some of the negative consequences. What have you seen in your careers work positively? How have you seen product marketing and product management effectively work together and collaborate together? Let's start with you, Riju. So I think the most effective working relationship is when you start with exact alignment. Your product leader and your marketing team leader are joined at the hip. They have regular syncs, they have uh, conversations around resources, around prioritization, even right down to the, the everyday activities. And when it starts with that, then those projects and then those, um, I think, working relationships are just a lot better. Yeah. And when done right, that team is that's responsible for both acquisition, retention, activation, uh, expansion. That customer journey is phenomenal. When those two work together and there's alignment from the top, you you have kick-ass products. You really do. Here we go. Uh, I couldn't agree more with what you said. In fact, just going back to your last point, a lot of times when 
when it's the actual practitioners, they know that dysfunction is there. And a lot of times they're, they're sitting there struggling and trying to work through that dysfunction. So I love the follow-up, which is how do you sort of get past that? How do you effectively collaborate? I think I referenced, um, you know, that you need that alignment when you're going into a new org or you're in an established org of who is doing what function and, and couldn't agree with Ritu more that needs to start at the executive level. What are the things, what are the priorities that we're working on? How are our respective collective teams that are going and tackling this, sometimes in the same org, sometimes in different orgs, um, going, to, going to do that effectively and do that collaboratively. I think one of the things that I've shared with my teams or I've tried to do myself is start early on. You know, you're, you're working on, it, on your planning, bring your product marketers very early into that planning so that you're aligning on the releases, you're aligning on what your messaging and your themes are around those releases. They get a sense of where you're going directionally so that uh, we can talk about the pricing and packaging much earlier rather than later in the, it's like, oh, we wish we could have done this this way and taken it to our customers. So I think really early effective communication between the, the, the two functions is really critical. Um, and, and really focus on what are the white spaces where you know you need to go and do more. We, we all use different frameworks out there that tell us what we should be focused on as product managers or product marketers. Uh, and there is overlap in those as we discussed a minute ago. And if you can, uh, there, there are areas that you're just, as an organization, you're not focused on and you're not doing. And if you can uh, take those, one of my uh, biggest pieces of advice to any, any product person, what no matter the role is, go and find those white spaces where your organization isn't doing the things that that they should be doing and go and try to focus those and learn on those and bring your colleagues into those learnings as you're as you're going about doing it and i think collectively you'll you'll rise the the effectiveness of your organization i love that approach of the white spaces i just want to build on that for a moment because i hate this answer that it depends it varies but the reality is every company is a little different and that line between product marketing and product management really does vary from company to company so when you go in, you identify where those white spaces are, then you can assign, for lack of a better term, and say like, hey, this is a function that could go to product management or it could go to product marketing. Who's gonna do it? It's not happening right now. Someone should do it. And who's the, who's the best suited to do it? And then who has the bandwidth? Um, I do wanna to transition to some questions from the audience. Some of you guys submitted questions via LinkedIn, so I really, really appreciate that. So I'm gonna do the best job I can at articulating them. One question that came up from multiple people was, early on in the product development life cycle, really early on, what role does product marketing actually play? The, the underlying theme, these were all questions from product managers saying like, hey, I've got my product marketer early on in the product life cycle, but I don't know what they should be doing. So I'd love your perspective. Let's start with you, Ritu. So I think I come from the startup world, so I'll, I'll take that view on it. Uh, a lot of times, both product marketing and product management are going out and validating the founder's vision, to be quite honest. Product ma marketing is going out and validating the ICP, building upon what the founder's vision was on who they yeah. wanted to sell to, um, validating the needs, looking at market trends, and trying to determine what would this MVP look like. Yeah. That product management then takes and builds and product management at that point early on owns the, the customer feedback loop. And then once you do have an MVP, um, I've seen product marketing take over and try and package the benefits and try and figure out how you then um, take that message and then feed that back into the market. But it is really founder led in companies that I've been in and been yeah. validating the founder's vision. Yeah, I think Darshal, you'll have a unique perspective on this being the product marketer on the panel. Yeah, so how many people remember the first ad of the iPod out here? It, it was not 5 GB in your pocket. It was 1,000 songs in your pocket. And so, um, you know, as, you, as you're working with your product marketer early on, um, they can help you look at your ideal customer profile, um, buyer personas, use cases. Um, if you're expanding or planning to ultimately scale across multiple verticals, or even uh, expanding into local markets like APAC or EMEA, how can your product go to market in those regions? They will have expertise there or will know partners there that you can work with um, to get insights early on. And ultimately as a product manager, um, you, know, you don't wanna build something and hope that people buy it or it just sells. You wanna build something that is aimed at solving customer problems. And, um, and so your product marketer can help you 
uh, with thinking through those and crafting your uh, product to look like a solution set. So as you start thinking about your sprints and your roadmap, you're less hung up on individual features within the, that roadmap and more thinking, hey, how is this going to help us with our early alpha and our MVP? Are we going to be able to solve those main problems? If so, we're ready to go into GA. If not, we're just not. And it's less about feature versus feature and more about solutioning at that point. Some of your answers naturally dovetail to the next question that we got from some of the people via LinkedIn. And the question was, who owns customer insights, right? The, frequently, the product marketing team wants to be the voice of the customer, voice of the market, but then the product managers are also very involved soliciting input as part of the beta programs and ongoing, right? So I think that you're very natural to speak on that based on where you work to start. I'd love your thoughts. Like, so where's the line? Great question. I mean, I think as a company, we think that everybody should be focused on, on customer insights and customer feedback. So I don't think that there's a, there's a right answer. I think you're right. Voice of customer programs exist. They live in product marketing or marketing teams. But uh, we all know that as product managers, if we're not talking to customers, we're also not doing our job. So I think it's really dependent on the type of customer feedback that you're trying to do. Uh, if you're doing discovery or uh, early on, just trying to get an understanding of where you might take your product or a uh, particular experience, uh, you, you're going to have your product or research teams really focused on that. Whereas if you're thinking about messaging, feedback, win-loss analysis, some of that may be later on and really closely aligned with the product marketing team. So uh, I don't think that there is a, a bright line in terms of this team owns customer insights or feedback. If you talk to our customer success teams in our organization, they also feel that they have a very uh, important stake in, in, in uh, uh, gathering or, or discussing that with customers. So I think it's really the, the type of feedback that you're trying to gather really drives who might be leading it, who might be uh, bringing those insights to the rest of the organization or using different tools to, to capture it and, and, and get those insights uh, broadly distributed uh, within the org. Got it. Darshan, you want to give a shot? Yeah, so... Um, you know, when it comes to feedback, I think every the, the companies only be successful if everybody is customer centric. I don't think any one team should necessarily own it. Um, but that being said, when it comes to product feedback, so you know, feature requests, bugs, um, product specific enhancements, um, that should be more directed towards the product team, and the product marketing team can own executive buyer feedback. So how is uh, this product helping us drive value? Um, they should own customer advocacy, so helping generate uh, customer success stories that you as a product manager can use to take a social proof and sell more of your product. Um, and really, um, at Amplitude, we have a strong process where customer success and sales teams are closely involved anytime there's interactions with uh, any members or any types of uh, customer feedback that we're collecting. Like many of these things, I do think it's a team effort. And I think this customer feedback is one of those things. Many times I've seen that specifically in like a beta program, the product manager and the product marketer are attached at the hip. And that during the beta program, the, part, the product marketer might own the customer feedback, but the product manager is right there with them, listening to all the feedback, but making sure it happens, it, more, it sometimes relies on the product marketer. But again, it does vary from company to company. Um, Riju, do you have anything to add on this question? I'm going to do a shameless plug for product board here. It's okay. Two sets absolutely help when you have a centralized repository, whichever one that will be, um, and have customer feedback in there. You don't have to keep going back to the customer. You're not constantly knocking on the CSM's door uh, to try and get all of this feedback. And you, whether it's whichever team goes out and gets it and is able to log it in a central repository, people can go back, the other team can go back and take a look. And you're not constantly, it's not who gets it, it's how it's being used. And I think that's yeah. the difference. Any team can go out and get the feedback, but both teams need to use it. So just using your product board example, are there specific use cases that product marketers use product board for? Like what specific use cases? Absolutely. So when you look at a roadmap and you have all of these capabilities and feature sets in the roadmap, most of them should be customer defined. Yeah. So how did if you look at all the feedback that came with a particular feature set from product board, that absolutely changes the game for a product marketer. 
while the product manager built the feature set, the product marketer now doesn't have to go out and ask a million questions about that feature set because he's already seen the feedback on why it was built and what customers were asking. So messaging and positioning, it's a game changer. Got it, absolutely. So we're run, running a little short on time, but one quick question. So there's this kind of evolution and Carlos spoke about it in his last presentation like that. A lot of product leaders are effectively becoming GMs of a business, right? And I would just love each of your perspectives is like, where do you see the roles of product marketing and product management evolving over the upcoming years? What changes do you see happening? Let's start with you since you're the far end. You know, I think for product marketing specifically, um, and if you guys have heard of this growth marketing term, I see that role, the growth marketer and the product marketer become one person. Just AI is giving us so many yeah. data sets, so much data to be able to, to look at. PLG is taken off. I think just having that sorts of data, you need a growth marketer's head and then you need a product marketer's heart. So I, I, I yeah. do see that become one person and focus specifically not so much on acquisition, but on activation. And I see product managers really focus on, you know, more empathetic product managers really focus on retention and, uh, and expansion. I, I've seen these roles evolve in the 20 years pretty constantly and, and uh, depending on the org, even within an org, they've evolved over the years. My, my role at SAP started as a product manager. It became a solution manager, which I would say is, was much more akin to a product marketer. Uh, before I went back to, you know, quote unquote, product management. So I think uh, there is a, you know, this, this idea that these roles might come together. There's so much breadth to cover in terms of effectively doing the roles uh, in the job of product that I think there's going to be distinct roles within all organizations to, uh, to continue. Now, in, in maybe in a B2B organizations, it's, it's, it's a little bit more bright line and distinct than a B2C organization. As you referenced, Brian Chesky in, in Airbnb has brought product management and product marketing closer together and established a more program management function. So uh, I think this is a constant evolution. I think Ritu is accurate in that there's so much data. Uh, this idea of, of growth marketing and product marketing really coming together is maybe a, a, a somewhat evolved role of product marketing. We see that increasingly being pretty critical in terms of uh, activating our customers. Yeah, I, I tend to agree well, with growth marketing and product marketing. I'd even add that, you know, at the practitioner level, as you start thinking about all the jobs that need to be done, um, you know, organizations will keep changing titles and who's going to do them. But I don't see one individual owning everything from product road mapping, sprint planning, working with design and engineering counterparts, and also running campaigns, thinking about positioning, messaging, and everything that that entails. And so these roles are going to continue to intertwine and there's going to be more interoperability operability between the two, but I don't think they're going to completely merge into one and going to be done by just one individual, at least at the practitioner level. Um, and as a product manager, that being said, I'd recommend to this audience, start thinking about and working closely with your product marketing counterparts. Because um, the more you think about your buyer persona and the value and use cases they're trying to solve, um, the stronger your product is going to be, uh, and as, and also you're going to go to market and have a better alignment and launch with your marketing team. I'm going to build on some of the things that each of the panelists had just mentioned. I think that we two did a good job at calling out growth. That was something that we didn't mention in this, but that is like the third leg of the stool between product, product marketing, and growth. They're all participating in these various PLG and self-serve aspects. So they'll continue to be tight collaboration. You know, I share, I've been in this industry for more than 20 years. And when I started, product marketing reported in a product. It was effectively a product role with a specialized skill. Over time, sometimes it more frequently reported into marketing, which is great. Regardless of the reporting structure, there has to be very, very, very tight collaboration. And that's only going to continue. So I think that's some of the, you know, LinkedIn banter about, you know, product management going away and becoming product marketing. I think that maybe some specific use cases that might be true, but the reality is that there's going to be a need for specialized functions, especially for the people doing the work. At the top level, there's just going to need to be increasingly more collaboration and alignment. But for the doers, the practitioners, there's going to be there's plenty of work to do. And with that, I want to thank the panelists for being here. 
Um, I want to thank all of you for joining. And if you want to learn more about any of the companies that they work at, they all have booths out in the back. So let's give the panelists a quick hand.